Good morning. Um, our announcements are um, to remember to tune in to our Wednesday devotions um, at 11.30 on Facebook Live. And if you're interested in participating, and we'd love to have you participate, um, please let Jody Kaiser or the church office know. We'd love to have you help us. Uh, the ladies' senior exercise is still meeting every Tuesday and Thursday from 9 to 10 in the fellowship hall, and I understand they're having a grand old time. Um, Pastor Gong's Bible study group has begun meeting again on Tuesdays at 1030 in the pastor's office, and um, they're studying the book of James. In addition to coming to our sanctuary um, and hearing the sermon live, watching on Facebook Live and watching a recorded version the next day on YouTube, you can now also tune in to our broadcast on radio. The station is 93.1 FM, and it's only about a half a mile radius, so you will need to, have, uh, to come to the church parking lot. But this way, after church, uh, you can wave and say hi to everyone as they come out. And, um, and remain in your vehicle and feel safe. Um, our college student packages, we have 13 college students. We've gone into grandchildren now, and um, I was mistaken, and we're not packing those until November, but we have been blessed with lots of goodies to go in the bags. Um, also, uh, this past Wednesday, um, United Methodist Women packed um, gifts, snacks for the staff at Mount Gilead Elementary School, and they were glad to receive those. Next Sunday, the United Methodist men will have their breakfast at 7.30, and they want everyone to come and join them. Um, now, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Um, in the way of a, one more announcement, Sophia, do you have a concert coming up? Yes, it's going to be this Friday at 7 p.m. Uh, the singing is going to be Church and Joy. So uh, we designed it as a Thursday night because we will be the quarantine precautions. But any of you who would like to attend, uh, you're more than welcome to. It's going to be a concert of all of my music. Let's plan to go and support Sophia. Um, yeah, I'm sure it will be a beautiful, wonderful evening. Um, please stand for the call to worship.
God calls, where are you? And we respond with guilty silences. God calls and we are afraid. God is our dwelling place and we try to move out. In Christ, God summons us back to full participation in life. It is hard to reorder our priorities to give God first place in our lives. There is good news here of Sabbath rest and resources to meet all life's troubles. We come to listen for God's active living word and open ourselves to the one who knows us best. And let's turn now to page 881 in our hymnal to um, share the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <laughs> open your hymnals to page 98 for our opening hymn, To God Be the Glory.
be seated. Let's join together in the prayer of confession. Amid the toil and trouble of life, we admit, O oh God, that we focus too much on ourselves and the things we can accumulate. We fail to see the pain of others, and if we do see their agony, we discount it. We blame others for the mistakes we ourselves make and expect such consideration when we are disobedient. If we are faithful to your commands, we turn away dismayed when more is expected of us. Save us, God, from this way of death. We talked about that in Sunday school today. We'd love to have you join us. Let's join uh, listen as we share the assurance of forgiveness. All who put God's will first in their lives know that God can accomplish what is impossible by our own efforts. We will know, even when life is difficult, that salvation has come and eternal life is a reality. Praise, Praise God. God. Amen. And the prayer for illumination, join me. O oh God, your word is more precious than fine gold and sweeter than purest honey. As we turn to your scripture, send your Holy Spirit to infuse your word with truth and grace so that the good news of your love would shine before our eyes and delight our senses so that we cannot help but respond with wonder, faith, and trust. Amen. Our scripture lesson today comes from the book of Mark, chapter 10, verses 17 through 30. In your pew Bible, it's in the New Testament on page 44. And as he was sitting, setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to in inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. Do not kill. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and mother. And he said to him, Teacher, all of these I have observed from my youth. And Jesus, looking up upon him, loved him and said to him, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. At that saying, his countenance fell, and he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said to them, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And they were exceedingly astonished and said to him, Who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With men it is impossible, but not with God, for all things are possible with God. Peter began to say to him, Lo, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly, I say to you, there is no one who has left the house or brothers or sisters sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
And now Jackie Johns will share our children's message. Good morning, children of God. I want everyone to try something. In a minute, I want you to take a deep, a big breath of air and hold it. Not right now, just a minute. I want you to take a big, amazingly huge breath of air and then hold it. I'll do it with you on three when we're ready. Ready? One, two, three. Breathe in and hold. Now that you're, now that you're full of air without letting go, try to breathe in another huge breath. Ready? One, two, three. Now you can go back to breathing normal. So what do you think? Could you breathe in as much air the second time as you did the first time? Oh. You couldn't get as much air in because you were still holding on to that first breath of air. The way breathing works is that you have to let go of the first breath in order to be able to take the second breath. But if you think about it, that's kind of scary. We're letting go of something we need before we actually have the next amount of the thing we need. We have to trust that there'll be more air for us when we expel our breath. In today's Bible story, we heard a similar thing. In today's scripture, there was a man who asked Jesus how he can better receive what God is offering. So Jesus tells the man he has to give away to let go of the one thing the man thinks he needs so that he can receive from God the next thing he needs. And you know what the man thinks he needs, Emily told us. That sounds like breathing, though, doesn't it? Except for this man, letting go of that first thing, his money, was a really hard thing for him to do. It was so hard for the man to let go of that actually gave up and walked away. He just couldn't let go. Jesus then tells his disciples, that was a very hard thing for him to do. And the disciples ask, yes, we see that. How can anyone do this? And Jesus says, for God, all things are possible. What Jesus means by for God, all things are possible is that we are not expected to do things on our own. Instead, we're expected to ask for God's help, not just for the big things, but for small things too. But in order to receive God's help, we sometimes have to let go of something else. We have to let out that first breath so that we have room to take in the second breath. Sounds a little scary, which is why I'm thankful we have these stories that show us what happens when we ask for God's help and make room in our lives to receive it. We see Jesus share God's healing, forgiveness, mercy, and love with many, many people. And when we ask for God's help and make room in our lives to receive God's help, then we can do those things, the same things that Jesus did, because all things are possible for God. And that's the good news for today. Let us pray. Dear God, help us make room in our lives to receive your gifts and to share the gifts you have already given us. Amen. Thank you very much, Jackie. That was an excellent children's sermon. That's wonderful. Let's pray. Loving Jesus, open our hearts and minds to you and to your word. Let the words of our, my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Our rock, our redeemer. Amen. When I was in the Korean army, I taught Taekwondo, Korean martial art. After the teaching, I evaluated trainees 
attack on the skills. But before I teach, before teaching, I commanded them. Attention. Stand up straight. Hold your chin up. Do not move your eyes. Focus. If any trainee did not follow the instruction, he was in big trouble. Basic military training demands straight posture. Because our posture, the way we carry ourselves, our exterior physical demeanor is, in, is an indication of what we are going on with our, within our soul. You can see this is clearly on TV commercials. The TV commercials shows us the depressed, the sleepless, and the less energized well with their postures. And then whatever they take, medication, food, or drink, whatever that is, you can tell they are energized so quickly. Physical posture is seldom mentioned in the Bible. In Luke chapter 13, verse 10 through 17, describes the woman who was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. All she saw was people's shoes or sandals. But when she met Jesus, she stood up straight. In one account, in encounter with Jesus, her deformed countenance was healed. In today's scripture, Gospel, from Gospel of Mark mentions posture. Did you catch it? As the as we read the scripture. A young rich man came to Jesus and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? With the conventional words, Jesus told him to keep Ten Commandments. Surprisingly, he replied, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. The scripture says, then Jesus looking at him and loved him and say, said, you lack one thing. Go sell what you own and give the money to the poor. And then come and follow me. At Jesus saying, the scripture says, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Another translation says, at this, this man's face fell, or his countenance fell. His countenance became sorrowful. His countenance indicated his face, his whole posture. Once you, we put our head down, all posture cannot be straight. He did not feel exhilaration, joy, or peace. He slumped down and got very depressed. We have seen others countenance of fall. A senior citizen was approached by his doctor and the doctor says, sir, I'm very, very sorry. I'm very sorry that you have to have a surgery. With your physical condition, I cannot guarantee. What happened to the man is a countenance of fail. A man asked, how much is that beautiful, beautiful vehicle? The salesman said, oh, it's on sale. You are very blessed. And his countenance brightened. 
and the salesman says, you can get it for $60,000. And then his confidence fell. Jesus said, sell what you have and give the money to the poor and come and follow me. Even though Jesus said this out of love, surely the young man did not feel that he was loved by Jesus. In fact, he was a lovely, lovable man. This story comes from Gospel of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. When I combined all these three Gospels, this man had seven good traits. Number one, he was young. Number two, he was rich. Number three, he was a ruler. And number four, he was running to Jesus, which indicate he had eagerness. Number five, he was kneeling down, which implies he was humble. Number six, he was asking a question. What do I do to inherit eternal life? His heart was right. Lastly, number seven, he replied, I have kept all these things since my youth, which showed that he believed in God and lived with his faith faithfully. But he could not give up his possessions. Do we think this story is about money? You know that this young man's major concern is eternal life. But Jesus told him, you have to sell your possessions and give it to the poor. But Jesus ended up with, come and follow me. I believe that it is about discipleship. Jesus was calling the young man, the rich man, to come and to be his disciple. The Gospel of Mark begins with calling disciples in the Sea, uh, in the sea of Galilee. Jesus called Peter and Andrew, James and John. And they gave up their professions and families and followed Jesus. And yet here, when the young man was asked to come and to be his disciple, he walked away sorrowfully with a downcast countenance with a bad posture. Jesus has called us to be his disciples. And maybe we, like this man, have many possessions and our countenances are falling. By the way, do we feel that we are rich? Well, that's very subjective. But if we have a warm place to sleep or a cool place to spend time, enough clothes to wear, and more, more than enough food to eat, yes, we do. A vehicle to drive, and we have more than $20 that is available for us. And then we are rich. To compare ourselves with the vast majority of humanity now living or who have ever lived. The problem is not that we possess plenty of things, but the problem is that our things have us or control us. In order to have more things more and to maintain them and to be like John Doe, we use most of, our, most of our energy, time, and effort. Was this not the case for the young rich man? 
Jesus invited the man to strip down, to let go of those things which he so tightly claimed to come and follow Jesus as his disciple. But he walked away sorrowfully because he had so many possessions. He simply could not let go of his thing, which caused him not to grab what Jesus offered him. Jesus offered him the life of adventure as a disciple. But the young man turned away, turned back toward the security of things. After this story, Jesus commented about how difficult it was for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. It is hard to get into the kingdom of God when we are carrying older stuff on our backs, holding on to so many of the things to which we cling so tightly. And Jesus said, enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road is easy that leads to destruction. And there are many who take it. For the gate is narrow and the road is hard that leads to life. And there are few who find it. When I went to Israel, I was inspired by many different places. It's like, wow, there were lots of good moments. One place that I went to was the narrow gate. How narrow was it? My wife would come could not enter the gate with me. It's narrow. I had to go through it by myself. Not only by myself, I bent down and I had to squeeze my body. I could not take anything with me on my back. The narrow gate for me is to be a disciple. Therefore, the first step of being a disciple is to take away from us anything that hinders our new path with Jesus. For Peter and Andrew, James and John, they gave up their professions and their families. They knew it. Sometimes I wonder, what if the young man responded to Jesus differently. Yes, teacher, you told me and I am sell, I'm selling all my possessions and give it to the poor. Please wait until I come back and I will follow you. What if at that moment the young man had stood up straight and breathe deeply. And I says, he says, I realize that I want to take a bold and fresh beginning of my life. This is what I was waiting. But he could not because he was not free from his possessions. We say we like to think of ourselves as free and un unattached. In reality, many of us have sacrificed our health, our families, and even our souls to material things. We claim to be free and independent when in reality we are enslaved. From this perspective, when Jesus asked the rich young man to let go of everything he had, was this a burdensome command? 
or a gracious promise? Or was this an invitation? He just offered the man the possibility of new life. Much better life. He showed a different path to walk in life, love, and the light. One in which he could stand up straight and not to be stooped over with the heavy burdens of a mortgage, car payments, great desires, and ambitions. What would it take for us to stand up straight to be truly free in Jesus? What would it take for us to hear the story of Jesus and this young man, not in some kind of norous com command, but rather as a gracious and a loving invitation? I wonder if here today there is someone who hears this story not as a bad news, but as a good news. Have you seen a little boy in a playground? He climbed up the ladder step by step, and when he reached the top, and he looked at the down all the way, to the end of the slide. And we knew he was struggling. His internal fear and disappointment, we knew that. And then he slowly made his way back down the ladder. He stood on the brink of a momentous decision but was not able to take the last step. Have you seen those boys? A few months ago, my grandson climbed the ladder step by step for a high, very high slide in, 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 in uh, other county. When he got up to the top, he was a little bit hesitant to slide down. His daddy, my son, says, John, John, do you need me? So my son climbed up to the top and asked him, John, do you want me to go down with you? And my grandson says, yes. So my, both my, my son and grandson came down, slided together, and I saw a dazzling smile on both my grandson and my, my son. To be a disciple of Jesus Christ is not an easy task when we try to be with our own efforts. It is like going through a narrow gate or my grandson going down for, for a high slide. But, like my son put my, my grandson on his laps, Jesus places us in a safe and good place so that we can trust Jesus wholeheartedly. And our faith says, yes, Lord, I come down with you. My grandson, after he came down from the long slide, and he said, Daddy, do it again. Do it again. Do it again. I love this. It was a memorable and unforgettable time for my grandson, my son, and I. To be a disciple, it is not an easy task. But we say, it's not easy. But Lord Jesus 
Can you hold me as I enter into the narrow gate of a discipleship? And I can see in heavenly realm, our heavenly father has a great smile. Yes. Good job. I wonder if we are hearing Jesus say to you, come on. You can do it. You can do it. You are destined for more than your merely present arrangement. You can have a freedom. You can be free. You can come. Let go of everything to which you cling so tightly. It's okay. Let it go. And come and follow me, and you will be free today, tomorrow, and forever. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your word. Help us to follow you. wholeheartedly and to believe that you are with us. Help us to be free in you, with you, and through you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's pray. 
God of high expectations, lift us from our limited views of faithfulness. Free us from our dependence on things so we can move from living protectively to sharing, counting the cost. May we give, not for rewards, but endurance of thankfulness. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. As we continue worship our living and loving God, we have some celebrations and some prayer concerns. Well, first of all, last Sunday, many of you joined the annual church conference, and the annual church conference has finished uh, very successfully, and uh, we give thanks to God. And continue to remember people, those who are COVID uh, victims, victims of natural disasters all over the world, and uh, uh, people, those who are struggling with the COVID. Continue to remember Frederick Maria Hill, Lillian Stark, and um, Maria Inman, James Borges, and Shalira Metzger, and uh, Reba Kennedy. Are there any celebrate? Uh, also, uh, Brother Cannon and uh, uh, Suji came back from their trip safely. Thanks be to God. Are there any celebration or prayer concerns that you have? This coming Sunday, uh, which is the third Sunday uh, in October, every year, year we celebrate uh, Laity Sunday. So this coming Sunday, uh, our uh, lay delegate to annual conference, Suji Hirschberg, she will uh, preach for us. So uh, our prayers and our thoughts are with you as you are preparing for the inspirational sermon. Let us pray. Almighty God, ruler of the heaven and the earth, we worship your majesty. We bless your steadfast mercy. You are above all. In you, all glory and honor reside. We pray your name, for your love is never ending. Your compassion is beyond understanding. When we were yet sinners, you gave your only son to die on a bitter cross that we might have life. How can we fathom love so divine? Let your Holy Spirit fill our hearts, O Lord, that we might know your presence with a renewed power. Help us to yield ourselves more fully to your will that we might experience your strength in our lives. Protect us from evil, O Lord, that we might maintain absolute fidelity to your truth and your way. Enable us to order our lives that we place no priority higher than service to your kingdom. We ask all these things in the name of our loving Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Give us this day our Give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, to deliver us from but thine is the kingdom and the power and glory. Amen. Our closing hymn is found on page 399. Take my life and let it be. We are called to be disciples. 
So, O oh God, use our lives, our voice, our will, our hands, and our feet. Everything that we have, O oh Lord God, use us to be faithful disciples. So please stand and join him number 399. Let us pray. May the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in all ways. The Lord be with you all today, tomorrow, and forever. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The people of God say, Amen.